have a bit of fun. <laughs> That's poem number six on a Plauder Dolce. Uh, this wonderful recorder uh, was made for me by Jacqueline Sorel. I absolutely adore it. It's called Dougal. Um, and I'm doing this one for Lucy Oswald, a, a former student of mine uh, at City London School for Girls who wrote to me and said, oh, can I try this um, this project on recorder? And I thought, well, uh, some of them will work and some of them won't. Um, and it just suddenly occurred to me that this one I could try. So uh, it says in my edition, uh, well articulated, ha 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 ha, to be studied with double tonguing, forte and piano. And then there's no forte and there's no piano uh, written in, in this score. I know there is in the Chester edition. Um, so what I thought was, uh, on recorder particularly, we don't really have that many uh, art, uh, um, possibilities with dynamics anyway. But I think you might have heard some of those echoes that I was doing, which I can only really do with, with articulation. So uh, what I'm going to try and talk about is hopefully be relevant to both flute and recorder, uh, because I know there won't be that many recorder players who are going to give this a go, although there should be. Um, so how would I approach it? Slurred all the way through first. That's just to get that core sound really, really hard on the flute. Uh, we have a lot of f that comes out sometimes before our note. And here we need the real core of the note. So that little extra ha huh, that we can get. Um, but before then, nearly all my students that come to me with problems with articulation actually have problems with the airflow when they're articulating. The tongue, it's a big muscle. It does get in the way. Uh, and we have to compensate that a little bit. Yes, we can make the tonguing as precise and as small as we can, but equally we can try and think about the air flowing through. Works just as well on, um, on the recorder, just to keep that sense of the sound. Also a little bit of the shape. So I would go through the whole thing. trying to hold on to the sense of airflow, hold on to the core sound. We have even more slight problems in the recorder that we've got some nasty little fingerings in this key actually. Um, those, those sort of fingerings that just need to be really finger coordinated. Um, but you're going to have a sim similar although different finger coordination problem on, on the flutes. So slow all the way through. Then on, on flutes, I would suggest that you do everything with a ha, huh, with an almost like a bell, like ha, 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 ha. It doesn't work quite so well on the recorder, but I can give you a sort of demonstration. Really, really helpful on flutes, not so helpful on recorder. Next, I would do everything single tongued. The point of a single tongue is if you're then going to double tongue it, the precision of your t is so important for the kickback k on modern flute. On recorder, 
I've been doing this nearly all dugga 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 dee, not diddle. There's too many breaks for the diddle in 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 my book, so I would suggest that you do it all duh. And so when you're single tonguing the same. And what I'm doing is I'm analysing where my tongue is arriving and making sure that it always hits that same same point in, in, in my mouth. Um, think about the end of the note. It's staccatos are not just the beginning of the note, they're how quickly you can get rid of that sound. Um, sometimes, particularly again on, on recorder, because we've got the bass note, so that's flutes, it's like playing bottom Bs or bottom Cs the whole way through this section. <laughs> Now mine are bobbling a little bit anyway. I don't play the recorder enough, um, sadly. But change your articulations just so that you get a little bit of length there. I just want to be able to hear that note with a little bit more length. So just, just disguise that. And then to get ready for the double tonguing, just double on every note so that you are really listening out for your for your articulation. I'm not going to pick it up at the beginning again because I keep playing that beginning bit. Oh, that's another hazard in these studies, isn't it? I always find the first three or four lines are really good. I must have practiced those as a kid lots, but the last ones are not so good. Oh, and another word, just while I'm on the last at the end here, if you've got the Chester edition, the last two lines from the change of key which is written in, it stays in G major all the way to the end. Um, I know in the Chester it, it, it swaps back to the B flat and E flat at the beginning of the line and that's wrong. I'm going to pick it up at this section just to do there is I'm almost like putting a camera in my mouth so I am reading the notes because I don't know it well enough on the recorder but if I did manage to memorize little bits I would put all the focus inside to see what's happening in here it's like putting a camera in your mouth is my tongue always going to the same spot how big the movement is how can I make it even smaller uh, you've got time to think about all of that if you just do the double on each note once you end up putting it into context you haven't got so much time to think about it so do it when you've got a little bit of extra headspace um, then I suppose the only last thing I want to say is that whilst I'm doing it as a double tonguing study I want to be able to f to sort of vary that double tonguing so that for example when I wanted to play the louds and the softs um, let's have, where is the neckery bit? Oh, I know. Oh, I'm playing a load of nonsense. Anyway, you know the bit. Um, there's, there's also a possibility to go even shorter. So I want to keep exploring that it doesn't come out like a machine gun of an articulation that's identical all the way through, that there's a possibility of a little bit of change there. I want the harmony notes to come out a little bit longer. I want the uh, the big leaps not to necessarily have a double tongue. Um, certainly on the record, you can't do a duggy dugga digga. So all of this little bit where it gets the interval larger. <laughs> I'm actually not going duggy digga digga, but da da digga digga digga. So I need to be able to be flexible. I don't want my tongue to only go digga 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 or diddle 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 or tikka 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 tikka. I want it to be able to do a ta ta tikka 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 da da diddle 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 dum. So keep that that sort of flexibility going in your tongue. Hey, I hope you've really enjoyed hearing this one on a recorder. Um, I'm going to put my recorder back to bed now. It comes out once a year, poor thing. Um, but I hope it's given you some sort of food for thought. And uh, flute players, I hope it's in some shape or form relevant to your practice that you're doing in number six.